Hello, everybody. This is our first demo for the preliminary exercises for our first project. So I wanted to take a minute to show you how to set up an 18 by 24 inch piece of drawing paper so that we can use it to create 12 small design thumbnail sketches or design ideas. And those sketches or preliminary exercises will be four inches tall by five inches wide. So what I'm going to show you how to do is to put that onto an 18 by 24 page with even spacing and even margins. But to do that, I just want you to see that the paper that I'm using is a little bit taller than your screen, but that's because right now it is in portrait orientation. So when I mentioned to you that the paper's in portrait mode, that means that it is taller than it is wide, that your 24 inch dimension is your height in this case. So that'll be the top of the page while we're working. This will be the bottom. And I'm going to do this layout with marker. You'll use pencil, but I think it'll show up a little better on your screen if we do it that way. So although this is the orientation the paper will be in when we do our designs, I'm going to actually turn it into landscape orientation to start laying out my grid. So good practices in measuring. I'm going to line my ruler up along the edge of my paper. And you see I'm not putting it on top of the paper because it could get at a weird angle and it would distort your measurements. So try to make sure that the ruler is lined up right on your edge there. You can also do it this way. So you're on the paper, but right near the edge. And that's going to be a little easier for me because then I can see the numbers more clearly. So to start off with, I'm going to make marks along this side, which is the right hand side of the paper. I'm going to make the equivalent marks on the opposite side so that then I can line those up and be able to add in the division lines and they'll stay even. So the first thing I need to think about is how much height do I need, how much space between the top of the paper and the top of my first box. So in order to do that, I'm going to leave a one inch margin. So I'm just looking for the one here and marking that off. So when you're reading the ruler, the thing to remember, of course, is that the longest lines indicate your inch marks. So from the outer edge of my ruler to this first line by the one, of course, is my one inch. The second longest line is the one here in the middle that indicates my half inch. So on this side of the ruler, it's broken down into sixteenths. There are 16 small marks between the outside edge here and the number one. You can also, of course, work with the eighths of an inch side of this ruler. So it divides into eight even sections. One, two, three, four eighths would be your one half. Five, six, seven, eight would bring you back to a whole number. That's your first inch. So as you look across, you can pretty easily see visually there's the next half inch, the next whole inch. Just so we're aware of how to read the ruler. I'm gonna back up again so you can see the page a little better. So I marked off my one inch margin at the top, and now I know that the next box that I'm going to be making the borders for, that box needs to be four inches in height. So to make my life a little easier, I can actually move the ruler down and mark at the four inch spot. I'm gonna put a one inch space between the bottom of that box and the top of the next one. So there's a one inch space. There's my four inch height for my next box area. Another one inch gap. Another four inch height. 
another one inch gap and my last height of my box it's going to give me four inches there so you're going to wind up with a pretty big margin at the bottom you're going to have four inches here but only one inch at the top so each of these areas indicates the height of the box that we're going to be working in this is going to be four inches with a gap four inches with a gap another that's your third row gap fourth row so now that i've made the marks on this side i'm going to flip the paper over and make the equivalent marks on the opposite side so that i can line them up properly If you're good at math, you can remember that, of course, the one inch margin there at the top plus a four inch height would make your next mark at the number five. A one inch gap would bring us now to the number six. A four inch height should bring us now to what, the number 10? One inch gap to the 15, so that we've got four inches there, another one inch gap plus four is 20, so that should line up perfectly. So now, if I were to use my ruler across the whole page and line up those marks that I made, I would have the top and bottom borders of my rows. So that's pretty easy. And again, you're going to be doing this in pencil rather than marker, but I thought the marker would show up better for you on the screen. So now I've divided my paper into these four rows across. So if we turn it back to the portrait orientation, you have four rows across. So now we need to divide these into three columns that are five inches wide. So in order to do that, I'm gonna make marks, I'll use my shorter ruler to do this, along the top edge of my paper. I'm gonna leave just a half inch border on this dimension, and I'm gonna mark my five inch width of that box one inch gap, five inch width, one inch gap, and I should get now a five inch width with half an inch left over. So I should have a half inch margin on left and right hand sides, one inch in between, giving me three even five inch spaces to work. So I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom edge that I did at the top. Half inch, five inches, an inch gap. Five inches should bring me to the 11. One inch gap should take me right to 12. And there we go. There's my five inches with a half inch left over for my margin. So now if I connect these lines on my outer edges, and I can draw all the way across if I want to like this. Of course, you're doing that with a pencil. But you should now be able to see the layout starting to emerge. All right.
So now you have one, two, three boxes left to right on our top row. They are four inches tall by five inches wide, and they're all identical. There's a one inch margin in between them and a one inch margin below them. Our next row should be the same, one, two, three, another one inch space, one, two, three, another one inch space, and our last row of three. So remember this extra bit at the bottom, there's gonna be a fair amount there that's four inches worth. You can just imagine that as empty space for now. Again, you would be doing this in pencil, so it won't look as dark as this. The next thing to think about is what we're doing within each of these boxes. So we're going to come up with 12 sketches, 12 design ideas. We're going to pick the best of those design ideas, and that's what's going to be the basis for our first formal project. So the rules for this one, these three designs along the top, I want these designs to all be symmetrical. One, two, three. These are all going to be symmetrical. We're working only with line, and we can use lines that stop and start, that go in a multitude of directions. They might be horizontal, they might be diagonal, they might be vertical. But we want to limit the categories of types of lines. In this first box, we're going to use only geometric or straight machine-like lines. In this middle box, we're going to do organic lines ones that look like they come from nature, curves, natural forms. And this last box is going to allow us to do a combination of both linear geometric lines and linear marks that are more organic. So these designs are going to be my symmetrical designs, and I want to put my focal point, the area of most interest, in the center. Now, I can kind of guess where the center is and just sort of put a little mark there to remind myself, or you could be more specific, you could use a ruler and connect the opposite corners of your box and find the actual center. So I did a pretty good job of guessing there, but this is more accurate. So of course you can use a light pencil to do that to find where your central focal point is going to be. In the remaining nine boxes, all of these designs down here are going to be asymmetrical. So asymmetrical doesn't mean that they are unbalanced. It just means that they won't mirror along a center line. If you ever made a Valentine heart by taking a piece of construction paper, folding it in half, and cutting a curve out and then folding it back open to reveal a heart shape, that's a symmetrical design. It's exactly the same or very nearly the same on left and right of a center line. We want the majority of the designs we're doing to be balanced asymmetrically. The reason for this is that the symmetrical design is a more obvious way of solving the problem and it's sometimes visually a bit boring to do. So we're going to look at how to make these more asymmetrically balanced we're going to use what we call the rule of thirds. And the rule of thirds is essentially a way of locating your focal point, your main area of interest, near the center, but not absolutely slap in the center. I can do this by estimating roughly dividing my design into three horizontal rows divided by three vertical columns. So if I lightly, again, it's marker, so it's going to stain a little bit, but if I kind of lightly estimate those, then that intersection where a horizontal line crosses a vertical is a good place roughly for a focal point here, here, here or here, somewhere in that general area. I'm not in the dead center. I'm near the center, but a little bit high to the left, or near the center, a little bit low to the left, or near the center, a little high to the right, or near the center, a little 
low to the right. This is a way of doing composition that kind of creates a little bit more interest or uh, a little bit more of a sense of real world space. For instance, a landscape could look really good there if we had a focal area of leaves on a tree, on a tree trunk, and some grass and some water. That's a nicely balanced design much more interesting than putting a tree in the absolute dead center of the image, right? It's a little more dynamic, a little more interesting. If you look at the difference between my puffy, weird tree and landscape here, this is kind of boring. This is a little bit more interesting. So we're looking to use this idea of the rule of thirds in these nine boxes at the bottom. If I want to, I can do this estimating where those points are by hand, by eye, without measuring it. If you want to get really technical, you really could bring your ruler into play. And roughly, if you measure over one inch and five eighths, one, two, three, four, five. So just a little bit more than one and a half inch from the left-hand side. One inch, one, two, three, four, five eighths from the right-hand side. Top and bottom. And then on this axis, Remember, we're dividing a four inch height into roughly thirds. So that works out to be just about one inch and three eighths. From the top, one inch, one, two, three. From the bottom, one inch and three eighths from the top. And so if I were to connect these up with a line. This is almost like a viewfinder on a camera grid that's going to show us where is a good location for a focal point. It's got slightly mismeasured that little bottom one, but we're pretty close. Inch and three eighths would be about there. So this guide, this rule of thirds, says if I put my focal point either here or here or here or here, I'll be able to achieve this idea of an image that still has balance but is not completely symmetrical and is a little more visually intriguing. So the basic layout of these 12 boxes is a little easier to see if I switch over to one that I started yesterday. So this is really more what yours is going to look like. If you draw all of your guidelines in with a pencil and then use your Sharpie to darken in the edges, you'll be able to see your boxes a little more clearly. So let me show you up close what I'm asking you to do with the design part. Zoom in a little bit. On my top row, remember we are working on symmetrical designs here. So symmetrical to left or right, left and right of a vertical center line. So this design is pretty much symmetrical along the center, very much the same type of design left and right. The trick with this one is that I'm using only geometric lines. Now those lines could be very thick or they could be very thin, but your geometric lines really should look like they're made by a computer, by a machine, by a ruler, very straight. We're looking for measurable angles in straight lines. You can go on any diagonal you want. Lines could be completely vertical or completely horizontal. But the idea is you're roughly using about 200 lines altogether in these individual designs. So again, focal point in the middle, we want to direct your attention there. And I can do that with these directional lines that kind of point my eye toward the middle lines that point toward the middle. We're doing the same thing in the middle box. This again is a symmetrical design, symmetrical along a center line through the very middle vertically. And all of these lines look like they were 
the outside edges of leaves or some other natural form. They have curve. They're not geometric and controlled in that way. I'm still trying to balance what I'm doing left and right, but again, I am trying to draw your attention toward this section here in the middle. I might even create a current line or a line that becomes thick as it arrives. It could start thin and get thicker as we go. That really pulls your eye to this section. I need to kind of imitate that now to keep it symmetrical. But now our eye is being led into that central point. On this last box on the top row, again, we are being drawn into the central focal point. We're trying to keep the design as symmetrical as possible. But I have a mixture now of these machine-like straight geometric lines, and they can be thicker or thinner. In fact, thick, lines imply a darker value or a bigger size. If I use large, thick, dark lines, I can create a sense that something is near me. And by spacing the lines out and making them smaller and fainter, I can create the feeling of this space moving backwards, moving away from me into deep space. So here I'm combining both organic curving lines and geometric lines to achieve this design. The remainder of your designs, if you look closely, here's a blank box I haven't added in yet. You can just barely make out, I think, the pencil line that divides this into three horizontal rows and the pencil line here that divides it into three even vertical columns. So you can see where I've put a little pencil dot to remind myself this is the point I'm aiming for. Right? So they're near the center, but a little left and high of center. Near the center, but a little low and right. So I've given myself some challenge here in these remaining boxes. I'm trying to aim my focal area here, here here. Again, all of the rules of the types of lines are consistent across these vertical columns. So this box needs to all be straight geometric lines. The middle box needs to be all organic lines. And the right-hand box needs to include both geometric and organic, both. So what you're doing essentially is trying to create a design using a multitude of lines that will lead your eye to a focal point. So if I'm going to work on this one for a moment, this uh, box needs to be all geometric lines. You can use a ruler even if that helps you, makes you feel more at ease. But we're trying to direct our attention toward roughly this point. To do that, I'm going to make some contrast. If I create a larger, darker set of lines and create the illusion that lines are leading toward this point. Implied lines are pointing at it, but an area of contrast of this much darker, thicker area with a surrounding space that's lighter is going to create contrast and draw your attention. Same thing can be done here. If I'm going to make uh, some strictly organic lines in this box, maybe what I want to do is surround that focal area with a lot of textural organic marks. And then create a sense of smaller, lighter, more fully further spaced apart lines elsewhere in my design. My eye is going to be attracted into this contrast. In this area, again, rule of thirds, I've divided this into three 
horizontal rows and three vertical columns, and I'm looking for the focal point to be at an intersection between the boundary lines between those rows and columns. So I'm aiming for this to be my focal point. Maybe I have a really thick line here that is organic, and I'm making it thicker by drawing the outside edges of it and then filling it in. And maybe this line really becomes much thinner and it can be broken as it moves away from that space. But I can add in some very ruler straight diagonals that also attract my eye and lead me toward this point. So again, you can use lines that are solid, lines that are broken. They can go from thick to thin. They can change thickness. But your goal is to use roughly, and I'm not going to count, and I don't expect you to count, but keep it in your mind that you're aiming for using about 200 lines in each one of these designs. What you're going to come up with eventually is 12 cool linear design ideas, which we'll look at as a group and decide whether we think one is more interesting than another. Just based on these designs already, I'm a little more intrigued by the ones in this row that are leading me toward a focal point that's a little off center. The ones that are a little bit less intriguing to me are the ones that are a little bit more symmetrical. So this is your big challenge to start off your first project. Uh, I will post some examples of the initial design drawings from uh, other students so you can get a sense of what that looks like. And the instructions are available on the Blackboard assignment folder as well. So have fun with this, and I look forward to seeing what you can create.